You see this mic placement? I have had these lenses for too long and have no idea what to do with them. 2.8 is a pretty standard uh, maximum aperture for a lot of lenses. This is a 2.8 right now, and this is a 1. All right, it's 6.15 p.m. I hope I don't regret this. This is at a T1 right now. We have a 50, a 35, and a 20. All of those shots are at a T1. 2.8, 1. So a one is three stops brighter than a two eight. A two is twice as bright as two eight. A one four is twice as bright as two. And a one is twice as bright as a one four. When I went out in the nighttime in New York, there are so many tiny bright details off in the distance. Dark areas and bright areas and city lights and street lights and car lights. It's not the best thing to shoot at a T1 at least on any lens that I've ever used in that scenario because of the chromatic aberration. Outside in a desert or something, you might have better luck. That is why I'm looking at this more in the daytime. So another use case of lenses like this could potentially be for interviews. On a Super 35 sensor like the Komodo and a 20 mil lens like what's on here right now, you can move around, it's okay. I don't care about the audio quality. You can get more of a blurred background, obviously, than you could with a 2.8. In interviews, I shoot them a little bit wider. On full frame sensors, around a 35 or sometimes like a 50 or 40 anamorphic. At a T1, 20 millimeter, fairly wide, I still have a pretty significantly blurred background. The light is changing a little bit outside. Yo, can you look and see if I'm in focus? You look hazy. Yeah, okay. So I have an ND filter on here that might be making this look a little bit hazy. This is without the ND filter and a narrower shutter angle. Okay, quickly changing light out there. Also, I'm not lit at all right now, so um, we can not talk about that, but we can see the difference between the ND being on and off. I am going to put it back on so that I don't need to shoot at 11.2 degree shutter. On these specific lenses, close focus is pretty good. What I have here is a very rare screwdriver, one of the hardest to get in the world. Some of you may know where this comes from. Maddie, I know you know, but this is the close focus. Pretty good. It's very soft and dreamlike. It's pretty cool. Okay, so this is the 50 at close focus. So going back to what I was saying before, this provides for some interesting and kind of unique looks. Another great purpose for these lenses, if your first AC is being a little hard to deal with, you can have these in your bag, bring them out and set up some T1 shots and see how they can manage that. Okay, another 256 gigs going to Dropbox. I only have four left because they have false advertising on their website and do not support long time paying customers of their best plan that is still advertised to give you as much space as needed, even though they do not deliver on that promise. Dropbox, I hope that you figure this out. We're on a 50 millimeter lens and we're at a one. At a 2.8, this would be a little harder to do. So for certain types of shots, this might be useful when you're trying to create some type of different emotion or image that we don't typically see. It has a an older look to it. It has some nice imperfections and the lenses are like 500 bucks. One other thing we'll look at is the difference in depth of field for the first couple stops on this lens. Right now we're looking at a one. So this is the 1.4. This is the 2, this is the 2.8, and as we looked at earlier, 2.8 compared to a 1, 2.8, 1, 2.8. This is the 4, and this is a 5.6. I will stop here. Nothing like the sounds of New York. This is the 50 at a T1. The variable ND is on. Weirdly, I kind of like how a variable ND shifts the colors a bit for certain things. So this is a 2.8. It's just so satisfying to go to one. I find it useful to see the difference in exposure from one stop to the next. 16, 11, 8, 5, 6, 4, 2.8, 2, 1.4, and 1. All right, this is the 35. The ND is getting a little wonky. 
And lastly, we have the 20. And we are shooting on the Komodo at a two to one because that is my current go-to aspect ratio for YouTube. Looks good on the phones. We're getting some weird effect with the ND, but I will remove it and lower our shutter. One degree shutter. So at a T1, we're at a one degree shutter at 24 frames a second, and it is 4.30 p.m. We are just below clipping. We will take this for a little spin. And we can see what the focus looks like on these plants a little closer. So we can see how something like this compares to a 2.8, which is more standard. This is a 2.8, and I'll switch back and forth, but have the exposures match. 2.8, 1. 2.8, 1. I oftentimes find myself on B&H's website doing one of two things. Sorting the lenses by low to high and high to low pricing. When I'm looking at the high to low pricing, I'm looking at what lenses do I want to eventually maybe purchase for a business move. When I'm sorting low to high, I'm looking at what lenses might I want to experiment with that are cheap and new and maybe something interesting and unique. I never really pulled the trigger on any of those lenses. There wasn't really anything that spoke to me. In my looking at lenses on B&H phase, I did not see these lenses because they weren't out yet. These are new. I don't even think they're on B&H right now, but the point is they're 500 bucks. Even if you were to pick up just one of them, it could be something interesting to experiment with, could be something interesting to just bring with you wherever you go. They're fairly small lenses, and it's just cool to look at what a lens sees at a T1. I have an Alexa Mini LF package that I shoot a lot of work on. And with that comes a few complications. One, it's harder to move around, requires bigger batteries. The batteries don't last as long. Typically I'm plugged into the wall or on a block battery. It needs a first and second AC. Sometimes for certain shoots, I dial things back if I don't have the full team behind me or if it's something that I don't really totally need the Alexa for. I wanna dial back and fit everything in a backpack and use a lightweight tripod and have the batteries last all day. I've had these lenses for like over a month now and I just only started testing them. I was kind of like, oh, they're 500 bucks. I'm not gonna to rush to test them like I did with the Cooks where I like stayed up late to test them because of how much I love those lenses. With these, I kind of took a minute. Then the second I started looking at them through the camera, I'm like, oh wow, these look pretty cool and they're tiny and on a, smaller camera on a super 35 camera like on the komodo that i'm using right now everything could fit in the backpack like i mentioned and i can shoot an interview at a 20 millimeter and have the background blurred out that is an interesting thing to me and that is harder to do on a larger system like the alexa where you're having multiple pelicans and really needing a crew to operate it for most productions so I find that these lenses are cool. I don't want to send them back. I'm going to try not to send them back. And I'm also going to try to use them on an upcoming project where I would typically use the Mini LF. So we will see how that goes. And I think that's it for now. If you have any questions, let me know. I will catch you next time. Peace.